Hi, this is Philip Bynum from the Steve Vai Band. I've been a bassist for pretty much my whole life. Started when I was around six or seven. Actually, I started with cello and then went to guitar and then ended up playing bass because, as I always tell the story, I was one of the guys in my neighborhood who had an actual bass and an amp because my father and brother both played. So I became the bass player. Well, my bio goes like this. I started, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. I went to high school in Malden, the town I grew up in, and went to Berkeley College of Music. And from there began playing in um, nightclub and cover bands, and that was how I was earning a living for a number of years. Then began playing with some artists that wrote their own songs. I played with a guy named Charlie Farron, I played with Rick Berlin. I did some touring with a hip-hop band called World Premiere. And during that time, I played with a band called Fortune. There's another, a lot of these, a lot of these are all East Coast bands. A friend of mine, Mike Mangini, who I had played with in the Rick Berlin band, he was doing some work with Steve Vai. And uh, Steve had mentioned that he was looking for a bassist. And so Michael remembered an old friend, and I got to go out and audition, and I managed to get the gig. And here we are 25 years later, and I'm still doing shows with him whenever I can. How did you, how long have you been using a pick? When I'm in the 80s, I was playing bass in nightclub bands, and as the music changed from kind of dance to rock and roll and whatnot in the clubs, I needed to play with a pick because a lot of the rock and roll records were made with bass using a pick as opposed to using your fingers. So in my early 20s, I started, you know, I had played guitar, so it wasn't a real big stretch for me to grab a pick and start playing bass. That's how I ended up playing bass. And on recording sessions, sometimes guys would be like, well, I want a little more point or a little more definition on the sound, so I'd have to use a pick to kind of get a little more clarity, which, you know, which was just a way to play the, uh, the bass a little bit different. So what about the crossover pick? How did you discover that? That's a funny story. I was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so I discovered the crossover pick when I was working at the Los Angeles College of Music in Pasadena. I was playing with a guitarist named Frank Gambale in his guitar class. And a colleague of his named Brad Rebuchin came in and had met the creator of the crossover pick. And he said he wanted to show them to Frank. And lo and behold, I was there. And Frank said, hey, I don't, you know, hey, you should check this out. So I took it from him and uh, started playing with it. And the reason that I really liked it is that it's adjustable for your thumb size. So whether you have a thin thumb or a fat thumb or whatever, you can lock it on with Velcro and it stays in place. And then if you have to play something that you need to be able to play with a pick, and if you want to be able to do something that's you need to use your fingers worth, it's real easy to just go from pick to fingers to pick to fingers whenever you, whatever you need to do. Philip Bino signature crossover pick and package. What does that look like? I happen to have one right here. <laughs> Product placement. So what is this you're showing us? I'm showing you the uh, package that you get when you buy a crossover pick. You get a uh, pick of mine, which is the Philip Bino pick, of, uh, you know, heavy bass pick. You also get um, another another sleeve. So you can, if you prefer to use a different pick, you can 
glue your pick onto the, uh, the attachment here, and then you can put your pick in the sleeve and use whatever pick you want. That's the really cool thing about these is that if you like the idea of it but want to use a different, uh, a different gauge of pick or a different size pick, you can always just take that out and put it in the, uh, the other uh, pick holder and continue on with it. Having the crossover pick, especially when playing with Steve, some of his, some of his songs have a, are at a very high speed, and, you know, so it's easier to get the speed with my finger, with the pick, and to get clarity like that, to be able to keep up with those guys. So it also has taken the wear and tear off of, you know, because when you're using a pick traditionally, you're holding it with your two fingers, and it kind of tightens up the muscles in your arms. You know, and if you do that for three or four hours at a night, it's, it's kind of, you know, it takes a lot out of you. But with this, since it's on my, on my thumb like this, I don't have to hold it as hard and I can be a little more fluid and my wrist action and all that stuff is a lot less, a lot more relaxed. So that relaxes the whole, you know, everything is connected. So if your wrist is relaxed, your elbows relaxed, your shoulders relaxed, and you can have much more freedom and dexterity with a, with a free and loose wrist as opposed to a very tight, rigid one. So can you, um, like, pick up your bass and show me a few techniques that you use with this pick? I know that when the, um, in the 50s, in the late 50s, early 60s, when the electric bass was first kind of introduced into the musical media, now some will say, oh, this happened sooner or whatever, but when it kind of was in the mainstream, a lot of upright players going from this to this was a little tricky. But for guitar players, it was real easy to just pick up the bass because it's shaped just like a guitar. So that's why a lot of guys were using the kick, because that's what they were using on their, on their instrument, their guitar. In the 70s, with, uh, if you watch 70s television, a lot of the, uh, the music that was played was kick bass because it was really direct, nice tone, and there wasn't any, any issues of compression. Whereas when you're using your fingers, sometimes notes are louder and softer just because that's how they make you make it feel better. Um, and then in the 80s, when the, um, the hair bands came out, it was really you know, popular to have that real kind of driving sound. There's a lot of uh, a lot of the metal and rock bands. Most of them, pretty much all they use was bass with pick, and it's just part of the the, uh, the vernacular of playing bass of being able to do, you know, pick, slap, play with your fingers, play with two hands. That's all just kind of standard what bass players do nowadays. So it really broadens your capabilities with the bass to have a pick. Would you say? It gives you the ability to get, if you're in a situation where somebody says, I want you to do this, then you can't say, well, I, I don't know how to do that. You just pick up a pick and do it. It's, it makes you a more rounded musician to be able to play with a pick, play with your fingers, play slap, play whatever anybody needs. In closing, what would you like to tell people out there about the crossover pick use? Well, I would say to bass players, guitar players, beginners, advanced, whatever, whatever level you're at, Having one of the having a crossover pick in your arsenal will you know it just helps you as a musician to be able to play with a pick and to be able to have it in your hand and not have to 
have all the tension in your wrist and shoulder and whatnot. I think it's a really good idea to have something like that, whether you, even if you're not using necessarily a crossover pick or just a thumb pick or some kind of pick, it's always good to be able to do anything that anybody will ask you to do. As a, as a well-rounded musician, you need to have all skills and all. Thank you. 